It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got a showdown in the AFC South. It's the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars, next on Madden Football. The calendar may say autumn, but temperatures are still pretty sweltering here in North Florida. But the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Today, it's an intra-division matchup in the AFC South, as it'll be the Houston Texans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. Brandon Gordon joined, as always, by Charles Davis. But, Charles, a lot of optimism here in the Sunshine State about these Jaguars. They're the defending AFC South champs. They won a playoff game last year and gave the Chiefs all they could handle in the divisional round. And last season was seen as one where they were just going to try and rebuild and regroup. And they did all of those things and then exceeded expectations. Quietly, they've amassed a lot of talent and they expect to make another run in their division. Now, meanwhile, for the Houston Texans, the future is now. They take C.J. Stroud out of Ohio State, number two overall. And we will see him get the nod as starter in this one. <laughs> you and I laugh privately often when teams say, well, we want him to sit and learn. Come on, if you take him that high, play him right away. Go ahead and get him started. And we'll see him do exactly that in this one. So here's Kaimi Fairbairn to do the honors. And off we go from Jacksonville. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. Well, the Jaguars ready to go on offense for the first time, and they're led by the former number one pick in the draft in his third season now, Charles, Trevor Lawrence. Last year, we got the Trevor Lawrence and so many tabbed to be the savior of the Jaguars. He broke 4,000 yards for the first time and threw 25 touchdown passes and guided his team to the playoffs. This young man, he's been good since the first time he picked up a ball in youth league. They expect nothing less from him again this season. A man coming off an 1,100-yard campaign last year. Here's Travis Etienne. And this will be a Jaguars first down as he's got this up to the 35-yard line. He used to work relentless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw Lawrence. Calvin Ridley, and he'll take this down the 40-yard line. Coming out a very strong gain of 24. No answers defensively for this passing game here in these first couple of plays. They gave up good yardage to start the game. Here's another big chunk on play two. They need to settle down and figure out things quickly, or they'll be down seven to zip before they know it. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. Now Lawrence to throw. And that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Offense was moving them a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earned a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. ETN up the middle, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that, got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. On third down, Lawrence, a short throw to Ingram. And he'll only get this to about the 35, well short of the line to gain. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be fourth down. Brandon, a good idea there on third down. Run a little clear out and hope you can get your receiver the ball coming across the formation. Nice design, but well played defensively, and they stop him well short. They're going on fourth down. Lawrence. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert. 
turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down. And this defense delivers a turnover on downs on the very first drive of the afternoon. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. In only two seasons, Stroud showed all he needed to at Ohio State. All-American, Heisman finals, program records galore. He looked every bit like the number one overall pick. He went number two, but Houston is thrilled to have him. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. Here's Stroud. Man open, that's complete to Dalton Schultz. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. If you run an out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. That's to the veteran. It's Robert Woods. And he's brought down. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. Second and short, that's a rundown, so it's definitely a good time to go play action if you're feeling it, and they do so and pick up a first down. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A oh, man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. 20, and he will reach the 8-yard line before going out. That one good for 33 and a first. Well, it's kind of fitting. A couple days ago when we met with him, I said, what is it about your running game that's so effective? He said, I like to tag myself as elusive. He was pretty elusive right there. And his teammates appreciate that because they know they don't have to hold their blocks for very long. As one of them told us, if I just breathe some bad breath on the guy in front of me, that's all. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Damian Pierce. An eight-yard touchdown run. And the Texans will jump on top with the game's first score here this afternoon. So a toss play there does the trick as he's into the end zone. And you don't run this unless you're sure you've got a guy who has the speed who can get to the edge because what you're hoping for, for him to win the race to the corner and turn it upfield to the end zone. Fairbairn good with the extra point. And it's now a 7-0 game. A drive there of just four plays. And it was Damian Pierce closing things out with a touchdown run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And a drive that stalled out last time. Went for it on fourth, didn't get it. How does that translate here? I would imagine momentum's with the defense. Definitely with the defense because anytime anyone goes for it on fourth down, that's telling you as a defense that they, you can't stop us. We don't think that you can. And when you actually do, that may put a little dent in the confidence of the off. Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. 25 yards there on the catch and run. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Jones now in motion left. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And he got blown up. 
Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Plays like we just saw there. That's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs who are putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. And a good run here as he'll rumble all the way down to the 40-yard line. That one a pickup of 15 for Jacksonville. That's how you get right up off of the map because on the last play, they stoned him in the backfield and dropped him for a loss. But he's the type of guy that scared me a little bit because he's not daunted. Just got right back up, showed some confidence, and picked up a first down with his very next run. On first and 10, it's ETN. And a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Here's the rookie from Auburn, Tank Bigsby. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. But that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. First and 10 at the 29 yard line. On first and 10, it's Lawrence. A short throw to Ingram. Now this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter. Because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw into the hands of Kirk. And Kirk is going to have the Jaguars first down as he gets this down to the 13-yard line. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And he's going to get about four down inside the 10 to the 9. I think that run gives us evidence that the defense is getting a little bit tired out there. They've been out on the field for a long time, and that last run, they just cut right through them. Nine-yard line, second and six. And they'll go again with ETN. And he'll take this from the nine down to about the seven. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. Third and four. Now Lawrence. He's got his target. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for him, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. ETN sidestepping his way into the end zone. It's a touchdown. here Brandon McManus for the point after it's up and good so these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter and we're tied 7-7 
taken at the goal line. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. And he goes out of bounds just shy of the 45. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for, a really good change of pace back. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. They go right back to Singletary. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all of their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. On second down, here's Pierce. And they'll get this just to the 47, one-yard gain. Here now, third and a yard. Third and one, Stroud. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Devin Roy, the one to get home and earn that sack. Well, they only had a yard to go. They try to pass the football. Defense blitz. Defense got there. Yeah, I think then this one, this is probably good scouting, understanding a few tendencies and figuring out that, hey, they may take a shot. And they dialed up the pressure and got to him. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Roughing the kicker. So not just running into the punter, but roughing the punter. And I'm struggling with this one. You know, you're watching it, partner. Is it more the first rather than the latter? This is a tough one. Almost feels like he felt like he had to call it on that play. Pierce now up the middle. He'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. I think we all suspected that they were going back to him after he found the end zone on his last carry. And they kept the positive momentum going there. Another nice run by him. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And it'll be a minimum pickup here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. These two teams all tied after one. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a third down coming up. Stroud on third down. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kaimi Fairbairn comes on. From the left hash, this from 46. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. 
And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. Fairbairn now following the main field goal. He'll send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their own 21 now Lawrence to the sideline wow what a catch doesn't get a lot out of it but he is able to keep the feet in bounds so the completion good for six yards and that'll bring up second down A shotgun snap and a give to ETN. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Now they need two. Here's third down. Lawrence now off the bootleg. Well, they would have gotten the conversion if he could hold on. Instead, the drop means it'll be fourth down. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. On fourth down, on is Logan Cook to punt. Back deep is Tank Dell. And he'll get this away into the humid Florida sky. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Damian Pierce taking the field with the rest of the Texans offense. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. On the ground, it's Pierce to begin the drive. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. 39 yards the distance covered on the catch and run. Oftentimes now, offenses aren't nearly as precise as days gone by. They just tell receivers, find an open patch of grass and let the quarterback find you. And that's exactly what they did on that play. First with the pass through the air, nice chunk of yardage there, and then additional pickup with his legs after the catch. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Throwing now is Stroud. And he's got it. Touchdown, Texans. Nico Collins. A 20-yard touchdown. And they are able to add on to their advantage. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. 
It's good to make it 17-7. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it was Nico Collins who finished it off with a touchdown reception. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Jamal Agnew now to return it. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set here. They trail by 10, 17-7 as they come up on a first and 10. They'll start on the ground, ETN. And boy, this defense again really making things tough on him as they stop him for no gain. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. On the draw, here's Lawrence. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. The keeper gets him seven that time, but it'll lead to a third down. I thought that was a good call. Passing situation on second down. They hit him with the draw instead and pick up nice yardage. Yeah, because the draw, they're thinking pass when they see that initially defensively, right? Well, you know in today's NFL, most of the time on second and long when it's a passing situation, pass rushers are on the field and they're only thinking one thing, get to the quarterback. And oftentimes you can bypass them with a running play. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now Lawrence on first down. Completes it to Evan Ingram. And he'll go down, but not before getting us inside the 30. That's good for 28 yards. That was good protection there. No, that was great protection there because it allowed him to lock in on his receiver. Although I think he was looking for his tight end on the corner route all the way. Nice connection there for a really nice gain. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory as they're down to the 29-yard line. The slot man in motion right. He'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case, they gave yardage and didn't get it back. Not able to get a single yard there, and it'll bring up third down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third down and 12. Dolores will throw. And that will be caught, but of the end zone, says the field judge. It's ruled incomplete. Uh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. The kick by McManus is good. Good a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So chalk that down as an eight-play drive capped with a field goal. Yeah, as a friend of mine used to say, they were moving and grooving for a while, but they couldn't keep the momentum going enough to get a touchdown out of it.
After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here's Nico Collins, and this offense getting set to go for another drive. He's doing what he's capable of, having a solid game. Not, not the most amazing game. He's not over 100 yards, but a good game so far. And you just know that mentally, he feels like he's one catch away from turning it into a great game and starting on that road. And the defenders are well aware of that, too. They've got to figure out a way to not let that escalate. Keep him right in his zone here and call it a day because otherwise he can really decimate him. Better believe they are well aware of his playmaking ability. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. Play action. Stroud now. Caught left side by Mechie. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Holding offense. Well, they were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You should have to pick up a holding call. Stroud looking to throw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Tyson Campbell. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. Excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they went standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Now McManus to tack on the extra point. And he gets it to go, and we're all even, 17 apiece. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. the kicks away from a yard or two deep here comes a return and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback the Texans getting set here to take over again on offense now remember they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around yeah, and sometimes partner I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field you're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long you're not hearing everyone say oh, hey you'll get them next time hey don't worry about it all that stuff just goes right out the window you're right back out on the field with a chance to atone Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. The sound throw now from Stroud. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Woods. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. He's a gain of six. And it's third down. Here is third down and four. Stroud working out of the gun. I oh, had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get the third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. 
On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is set away. And they call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you, you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now ETN to start the drive. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. <laughs> I know we can't hear what's going on in that huddle right now, but I'll guarantee you at least one offensive lineman is saying, my bad, we simply couldn't move him off the line of scrimmage. We've got to do a better job trying to root those guys out of there. Line of scrimmage, the 36 on second and eight. Here's Lawrence. And he will find Ridley on the left side. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up the first down. Off the play fake, here's Lawrence. And a pass complete to Ingram on the crossing route. And he goes down, but not before getting this inside the 25. The end result, 21 yards. Throw a lot of credit to the play caller here. He saw the design in his mind and implemented it. A little zone structure here because they started the tight end on the left side of the formation and sent him on a crossing route. And this works really well when you can find that space between levels, and they were able to do so for good yardage. And boy, the strength on display there as he rumbles through tacklers for a gain of about eight. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Now a second and two. Here's Lawrence to throw. And Jones has it over the middle. And the Jones are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Lawrence. Got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Jaguars. Evan Ingram from six yards away. And the Jaguars have moved out in front. You got to figure down by the goal line. This is where a tight end earns his money in the high traffic area. And he's able to work free in the middle of the end zone and grabs that one for a touchdown. Now McManus for the extra point. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So the drive there took six plays. And Evan Ingram able to finish it off with a touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. And here comes the Texans now. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. 
And they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. The defense was ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion, but give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort, turned it into a successful play. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. Trying to find John Mechie, and it's third down. So seven yards from the first down here as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Stroud on third down now. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Call it a gain of six on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Now that's going to be a tough one to explain when they get together and watch the game film, isn't it? I mean, they had the right. And I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play with all reviews coming from the replay official here in the final two minutes of the half. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now here's the call. The Texans send the punter out as he'll kick it away for the second time. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And they will take over first and 10. The Jags going to go on offense now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. Now Lawrence to throw. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And they'll throw on first down with Lawrence. A very quick pass to Ridley. And he's got this down to the 35. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw Lawrence. Quick slam caught by Kirk. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 20 seconds to go in the first half. Second down and four. Now Lawrence. Complete to Jones. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 13-yard line. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. And with just four seconds left in this first half, a timeout call. So with four seconds to go in the half, here's the field goal unit onto the field from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So a capper there with a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half.
So barring a touchback, this likely the final act of the half as the kick is away. So we hit the halftime break here in Jacksonville with the Jags on top. As we send you a couple hours south of here to Orlando, that's where we check in with a coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, back to you two in just a bit. But first, welcome everyone to downtown Orlando and our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Jags were treated to a strong first half from their franchise quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. He's got a touchdown pass on the ledger as his guys were able to build a double-digit lead. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Texans down on the scoreboard, but they do get the first crack here as we are back underway in the second half. And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. The Texans going to take over here to start quarter number three. In the first half, they struggled a little bit to keep pace offensively, CD, down two scores here. So how do they make some changes coming out of the locker room? Well, they've studied what they did in the first half. They've seen what the defense has thrown at them. Now they want to have a plan of attack against it. So you come out, you're not going to get all the points back on one drive, but get started on it. Start chopping into that lead, and maybe it'll inspire your defense to help out as well. A run by Pierce begins the second half. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. But these guys are going to chop into that deficit. They got to do a much better job in the run game. Caught behind the line of scrimmage. No yardage will be found. And Pierce gets it again on second down. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now a third down three. This is the target incomplete. Well, they have any designs of getting back into this football game in the second half. They're going to need to be much sharper offensively than they were in this opening possession. Not much happening here, and it'll lead to a fourth down. The Texans send the punter out as he's on to kick it away. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36-yard line. 36 yards on the punt with no return. And that will come the offense as they take over. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. From the shotgun, Lawrence. Open man is Kirk, complete. And he goes out right around the 39. From the 39-yard line, here comes second down at six. From the gun, it's Lawrence. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. 90 yards receiving now for him in the ball game. It's a first down. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there.
straight ahead, ETN. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. You've got to be impressed by the defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. Ball on the 39. Here's second down and eight. Now Lawrence. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. They'll need to get it to the 30 for a first. This is third down. Out of the gun, it's Lawrence. And able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 19. Nice third down conversion and even 20 yards. For the kind of game he's had so far, he had to know that on third down, that they would be looking his way, and they did for big yardage and a first down. I think the defense fell asleep at the switch on that one. I would have doubled him, tripled him, anything to keep the ball out of his hands. Back to the ground with ETN. Fighting throw. 56 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. This second and four. Another tote for ETN. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. I'll tell you what, this defense hasn't played its best, but they're still right in this football game. And if they keep making plays just like that, they're going to give their offense a chance. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Lawrence will throw. Touchdown, Jaguars! Calvin Ridley, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Jaguars are able to widen their advantage. Partner, they had a good lead as they went in at the half, and they came out here in the second half and found a way to extend it. I love their consistency. Don't worry about what they said at halftime. This seemed like a team that was ready to play 60 minutes. And while this game is far from over, I love their approach. McManus now for the extra point. And that'll make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. So that drive in total, eight plays. And it's Calvin Ridley who finishes it off with a touchdown reception. Touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. But Houston's offense taking over again. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Singletary to get the drive started. Able to slither by. And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. Defenses always talk about earning the right to rush the passer on third down. And you know what offenses want? Win first down so they can set things up for themselves better. And that wasn't helpful there. Not a big impact on first down. Second and seven operating from the 34. Pierce takes it straight ahead. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. Defensively, they were in the 3-4. Solid run up the middle. What made it successful? Well, what you have to do is control the nose guard, but sometimes you don't do it by blocking him. You do it by influencing him. Get him moving to one side or the other and hit him back on the opposite. 
And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Now a second and ten. A run for Pierce out of the gun. Oh, he sheds himself free. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 88 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. And they'll go play action here with Stroud. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Stroud now on second down. To Pierce, they set up the screen. Give him six on the screen, but now it's third down. Caught that look from you there, partner. I think we're on the same page on that one. Just his first catch. I think we both thought he'd be a little more active in the passing game. Let's see if that's the start of them trying to get the ball to him a little bit more here in the second half. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. That is caught. He'll get it inside the 20, and he's going to get it all the way down to the 10-yard line. A huge play there for Houston, and even 40 yards. I don't care what level of football you play. This one was a universal, wasn't it? When we were kids and we played touch football, remember we get in these positions and you just say, everybody go along and hope someone would come free. <laughs> so now following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Back to the ground with Pierce. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Damian Pierce with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans get a bit closer. Sometimes you get a first and goal and you're back near the seven, eight, nine yard line and you start thinking, maybe we'll run it here on first down to get half of what we need so maybe we can have two or three shots at going for it from closer range. So this is a bonus right here. What a great run to work his way into the end zone. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. To return, here's Agnew taking it about the one. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Out comes Calvin Ridley and the offense for their next drive. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good. But there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check. But he has found the end zone once. But boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, make, you do. It you makes get, you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. On first down, Lawrence. That's going to be caught by Kirk. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. This offensive game plan has just been sensational. I mean, when you think about all the different ways they've gotten their receivers open so far, it's really been impressive. Scheme, design, execution. A handoff running left is ETN. Wiggles free. Yeah, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. 
Another first down, this time on a gain of 19. So they go pass, now they go run, and two plays resulting in really nice pickups. Certainly sounds like a 50-50 deal, doesn't it? Sounds like great balance. Well, you know what all those coaches have told us over the years, Brandon, that balance is? It means doing what you want to when you want to. That play call is working very well for them right now. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 38. Here's Lawrence. Throw right side is going to be caught by Kirk. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. On second down, here's Lawrence. And one more time, here's Kirk. Two yards on the pickup there, and it's third and four now. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. On third down, here's ETN. And he won't get to the marker. He's a yard short. A pickup of three, it leaves him with fourth and one. But a good play is made on defense. Oftentimes, leverage is the key to everything. Defensive line not getting turned. All the other guys making sure they're in the right spot. And on that play, they were able to stop him short of a first down. So Lawrence will exit, and on comes Brandon McManus for the Jaguar field goal. From the right hash, it's a 46-yard attempt. The kick by McManus is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So three field goals that he's hit. Now this last one helps him stretch out the lead. He's been solid, hasn't he? And he lives up to the adage that every offensive coach has ever said to us. We want to end every possession with a kick. Right? For them, it's either extra point, field goal, or at worst, a punt. In this case, it's been threes. After splitting the uprights, McManus to kick it away. And beyond the 20, but not by much. In fact, just a yard pass there to the 21. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. Right now, Charles, it just feels like they're trying to keep pace. They did score the touchdown last time out, but they still trail by double digits here. We'll see if this offense is once again up to the task. Yeah, and I think that after the last drive, they've gotten pretty revved up, don't you think? Everything they were doing was working pretty well. They go back out there with the same mindset, play at the same tempo and the same pace. Still a lot of time left to make something happen in this one. They'll start on the ground with Pierce. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play there. Second down. He can rack up those tackles in bunches in the run game from that middle linebacker spot. And what he has to do is make sure he congratulates the guys in front and tells them thanks a lot because as the guy in the middle, the Mike linebacker, you're counting on your front three, your front four, your front five, whatever you've got in front of you to take up all the blocking, allow you to roam and hit. And that's what he did on that play. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back to throw. Here's Stroud. He gets this one to Mechie. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And it's third down. And they'll try and run the option to pick it up. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And that one will go for 13 yards on the keeper. And a first down. Well, with him trailing here in the second half, maybe his legs can try to give this offense a spark. And that's the benefit of having a young quarterback, right? Having a rookie, a guy who will say, hold on a second. I have a little bit of fearlessness to my game. 
it isn't working as well the other way. Let's see what I can do to help my team this way. And boy, he did it there. On first down, here's Stroud. Throw over the middle is taken in by Dell. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it'll be second down. Brings up second and three at their 48-yard line. Singletary here running out of the gun. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 60 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. Now, yes, a two-possession game, but a good chunk of time on the clock, so they have the ability still there to run it on second and short, but maybe they need to pick it up a bit. You're right. They did pick up the first down there, but they, as you mentioned, they have to pick up the pace now because it's a two-possession game. They've got to get there twice to make sure they have a chance to win. They'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Toss left side for Pierce. And he's able to break out a one tackle, but then quickly brought down. And that last carry puts him right at 100 yards for the game. So how has he done it? Because he's been patient, followed his blocks, let everything develop, and then burst through for big gains. The Texans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and two. Stroud sets up the play action. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown, Nico Collins. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Texans have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where'd you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that into the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Texans, So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and 10 here. Looking to throw, Lawrence. And that is incomplete. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, he was in his own zip code, but somehow could not look it in. Oh man, late in the tight ball game, every play so critical, you feel like you've got to find a way to come up with that football. That was put in a great spot, but it just didn't want to stick in his hands. That's a big letdown. On second down, a run with ETN. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. This offense has had a lot to like in this game. I don't know that that last play, though, is going to make the highlight reel. It's not going to make the highlight reel, but it will be the focus of the film session that the team has to sit through. I've sat through those before. Never any fun. You're always excited about your good plays, and they actually fast forward through those. All right, that was good. All right, great. They get to the bad ones and really illuminate them. Not cool. Here's Logan Cook now as he's on to punt for Jacksonville. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Houston set to take over. And you sense the tide turning. They scored, then their defense forced the punt, and now a chance to ultimately take the lead here late. First and ten, it's Pierce. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. The stop for no gain brings up second and ten from the 20. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 116 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Another carry for Pierce. And space tough to come by there as they get maybe a yard to the 37. Nice run defense presented there, and what I mean by that is discipline. Guys filling the right gaps in the right holes, no one over pursuing, and making a very nice play. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. A uh, short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. And he's dropped right at the 40. Gain of three. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Stroud on third down now. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Now Stroud. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Short completion, just four yards, and that'll make it second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. From the 44-yard line here, second and six. The second down throw now from Stroud. And his throw is incomplete. I certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. This is caught. It's Woods. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. 
A nice gain of 21 yards. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Now they'll throw it with Stroud here, first and ten. They're plain and simple. That's the second time today that he's dropped the pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to it? Maybe his rhythm confused. was just off. He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. Second and ten. Again, it's Stroud. And incomplete on the deep ball. I think we were both wondering if we were going to see them try and push it deep downfield, facing a one-possession deficit late, and they certainly didn't disappoint. They gave it an effort. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Stroud working out of the gun. And got his man. It's caught. Touchdown, Houston. Take down. A 24-yard touchdown. And the Texans are an extra point away from taking the lead here in the fourth. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. A very important extra point there, up and good. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. And they'll bring it out to the 25 as Agnew elects for the touchback. Here comes the Jaguars offense as they get set to go again. Now the bad news for them, they've seen that cushion they once had totally evaporate, and they're working from behind. The good news, they now have the opportunity to regain the lead right back. Lawrence bringing the Jaguars up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Here's Lawrence to throw. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Jaguars. Christian Kirk, 75 yards. And the Jags use the defensive breakdown to take the lead away here in the fourth. Might be seeing that one on the highlight shows tonight. The home run ball here in the fourth quarter to take the lead. There's nothing like being aggressive, preaching that to your team, and then following through all the way through. Go ahead and throw one more up there. Why not? Been a great game, and we are not done yet. So here we go now as the Jaguars will go for the two. Will line up for the two -point Lawrence going to look to throw for it. And it is incomplete, so they can't convert for two. And now the lead stays at five. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us, because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wondered maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. 
offense back out there along with Damian Pierce. He's already hit pay dirt twice. He's up over 100 yards. He is feeling good. And he's just zipping along today. Everything coming together for him. It's that type of a day that you see it back. Just got to have a grin on his face every time his number is called. Because he doesn't feel like there are going to be any lost yardage plays. Nothing but big time positive runs. Making the sideline grin as well. Stroud to the air on first and ten. His throw incomplete. Oh, I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. No panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand, and that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Second and ten, Stroud to throw yet again here. That's underneath to Pierce. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. First and ten, it's Stroud. To Pierce, they set up the screen. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. And when you have success throwing the football, the old cliche becomes true. The playbook opens up wide. And these screen passes, they become even more difficult to stop. Here's first and ten. Stroud to the sideline and incomplete. Limited time left on the clock after that incompletion. So I think both sides are going to savor every second to prepare before the next snap. Because once the ball's in motion, it may be a non-stop push to finish this drive off. Everyone better be on the same page right now because I think they're going to try and get several plays off in quick succession if they can. Now Stroud. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Back-to-back -back incompletions, but we know this is definitely four down territory. Time not on their side. I don't think they want to try and get the first down in two installments. I think they got to go and get it right here, right now. Stroud to throw it. On a slant, here's Collins. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's a nice job right there, partner, because they were able to work down the middle of the field, working in the seams, because I think defensively, they were guarding the sidelines, trying to keep them from getting out of bounds. They took what they gave them, and it was successful. Here's Stroud. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Ooh, that's certainly not the worst thing. It stops the clock and lets your offense catch its breath and lets us exhale a little bit. Now I expect them to call a couple plays in the huddle, so they're ready if a tackle happens inbounds. But just over a minute to go in the football game. Second and ten. Stroud looks to throw. A short one going to be taken in here by Schultz. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. Big play looming here. This is third and seven with a crowd on their feet to throw with Stroud. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 29-yard line. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as the clock stops here with 46 seconds left to play.
final minute. One timeout remaining. First and ten. Here's Stroud. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Brought to the ground by the linebacker, Floyd Aluakon. Exactly what they were looking for. They've been giving up yardage. They've been letting them drive right downfield, but they got a sack right there. How about that for a little bit of revenge? They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like that there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Stroud back to throw. Fourth quarter, here's Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is out of bounds, but first he gets it inside the 10 to the 7. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. I tell you what, this is not for the faint of heart right here. Fourth down, this is taking a big risk. But it's as good a play call as you can imagine. And the defense just not able to come up with the stop they needed. And this is not just a first down, but a big play as well. Now first and goal. One final shot for C.J. Stroud. Mechie has it on the slam. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. Now second down in a few inches. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And this is going to be caught. It's caught. And they've won the football game. when you see a group score this many points it's a complete blowout but instead they needed every single one of those in this close high scoring affair and yeah, Brandon I'm still on the edge of my seat after that one because when you have that much scoring and it still comes down to a one possession game at the end that's not something we see very often and in this case these offenses they brought it the defenses they're gonna need some work going forward